Okay. Well, boys and girls, girls and boys, are you a lower elo cane main? Lower elo is uh, gonna be called below master tier. Just because I believe Riot announced that D2 plus is the elite tier. So if you are below the elite tier, if you're not an elite tier gamer, this is the video for you. All my elite tier gamers, I got plenty of other videos for you. This one is for my lower elo friends. How's it going? The name's Karis Mike. Playing in lower elo. We're in Smurf queue, so we're not playing against only like low elos. You know, we're playing with all all kinds of ranks: diamonds, masters, grandmaster, challengers, but also plats, golds, and silvers. Um, so, what exactly is this video? What exactly is this gonna be about? Well, I noticed that the way that the game is played is a lot different in every rank, but specifically below diamond two kind of falls under the same pattern of play style and the play style is you should play for 1v9 you should play selfish you should play only for yourself and i always tell people to play ross he's so good in low elo because people don't know how to kite they don't know how to dodge abilities so it's easy but i never gave you guys a good 1v9 ross build so up be the runes we're going conquer with sorcery secondary transcendence gathering storm double attack damage with armor in the mini runes now, the reason why you're running these is because we're here to give you guys the most 1v9 build and playstyle. So in terms of damage, in terms of overall understanding how to win games in lower elo, it's going to be very helpful for you. The number one thing I'd say about Kane that is just amazing for his carry potential is the fact that you can go either form and it works out very well. But we're going to focus on Ross for this one. And Ross is a fantastic team fight champion. So we're gonna prioritize looking for team fights here and see how that goes. First things first, you guys are probably curious what smite to go and win. That's a question I get very often. If they have a lot of mobility, like you know, the Akalis, the Kaisas, the, um, let's see who are some other high mobility champs, Kiana, just stuff like that. Stuff that's hard to stay on top of Riven. It's ideal to go blue smite because when you blue smite them, you steal their movement speed and you gain movement speed, so it helps you get on top of them. Now, if they don't have mobility and they need to go on you to damage you, I'd suggest red smite. For red cane, of course. And that's pretty important to note. So this game, I am going red smite. It's going to help you be tankier. It's going to help you do that burn damage. Because if you don't know the difference between red and blue smite, blue smite goes off instantly. It steals movement speed. And red smite is a damage reduction. It gives you damage reduction. Whenever you smite and attack the enemy with an ability, they will do reduced damage to you and it will slowly burn. The damage is pretty nice, but the main reason is for the tankiness. So, we should be good. Had a bit of a poor leash, so my clear here. Not as fast as it normally is, but whatever. Or like a second late. So... As I mentioned in higher lows, I'm always going Sterics. I'm always going, um, what am I call it? All, all kinds of items. Sterics, Death Stance, Visage, mostly defensive stuff to keep me alive. Okay, so we got Tony's Flash there. I don't really know how to play with an Ashcan, but I'm gonna shove the land here real fast. Nice. Okay, we gotta back off. Trundle's coming. So, now this is something very important to note. Is a lot of people, for this build, one of the items we're gonna get is actually Man Immune. I talked about Man Immune on Ross before. People always ask me about it. What do I think on it? I think for lower reloads, Man Immune on Ross is amazing because the damage is insane. But, I would not suggest getting it for your first reset. Your first reset should always either be Pickaxe or Iron Spike Whip. If you have any money extra to buy tier you should 100 percent but if you don't always go for that pickaxe always go for that iron spike whip if you can afford whip always go it it's the best um Rundle's probably gonna head top to try and secure that top scuttle he didn't go to it right now this is why it's important to count camps so he didn't go to it i'm not i'm pretty sure but i want to make sure that i'm pathing towards bot again so i can kill them again it's very important that you're looking to gank because in lower elos people don't really pay attention to ganks or pay attention to the jungler like a lot of the time 
Oh wait, he did do top scuttle. Huh. Oh, he must have done it immediately, then ran straight bot. Very weird pathing. Either way, in lower elos, people don't pay attention to the, where the jungler is, so it's very important to gank. Ganking is very crucial, because you can walk over a ward and they'll still die to a gank. It's pretty funny. I don't really care too much to track where the enemy jung is. I just go into his jungle every now and then to see if his camps are up. But most of the time, I just stay in my own jungle, farm my own camps, and then just invid whenever I'm big enough to fight him. Because ideally, when I look for an invade, I'm looking for the opportunity to fight, more importantly than just take the camps. Unless I know he's on the opposite side of the map, you know? Okay, so we're going to look bot again. Okay, we need him to Q in. That's perfect. So he Q's in there, and then he E's in. So we're just going to wait for this. Perfect. So another thing that's very important to make sure that you're on top of is objectives. It's the common FFO priority order. If you're a newer viewer, newer cane main, I'll introduce you. This is what me and the boys we call FFO priority order for cane farm from objectives. So the number one thing you want to prioritize on cane is your farm. Please don't run to me. 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 Actually, you know what? Screw it. Let's fight him. Can I get help here though? I had to smite that and flash over because I was too slowed, so I had to make sure to get that. But yeah, farm form objectives. This doesn't mean that you never get objectives until you get your form because you know farm form objectives. It means that you prioritize your farm and then you prioritize looking to fight for your form and then you get your objectives. So make sure you do that in the proper order. And if you do that, you'll be more than fed, more than ahead. Popping off, making plays. So now we're gonna get tier. We're gonna get Ionian boots and control ward. A lot of people they think control wards are necessary. In fact, I know someone who's higher elo, not higher elo, he's diamond, but higher elo named Duanel, who is a Hecarim Jung player, and he never buys control wards. He had diamond one. He doesn't buy a single control ward every game. It, actually, he had challenger. So he had challenger before, but he is currently diamond one. But what do we call it? This guy never buys control wards, and his logic is it doesn't give you damage, which, uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's not a bad point, but the thing is, is that it does give you damage, because when you know where the enemy jung is, you know what he's going to do, and if you know what he's going to do, then you can plot out your next move. A lot of jungling is scheming and plotting, so understanding where they are and when they're at there is very important for what your next move is. So let's see if I saw Trundle player's bot side, I knew he'd path up. If I saw him player's top side, I knew he'd path down, because you're not going to stay around. I mean, you might look for a gank, but it depends on the wave state as well. Because people that have that hypothesis that control wards don't help, don't understand wave state. Understanding how wave management works is very important to be in the jungler. See, originally I wasn't actually a jungle main when I first hit challenger. I was a top main, and then I was a support main, and then I became a jung main. So having that knowledge of how lane phase works with trading and waves and when to rotate all that stuff help me out a lot oh god this is bad this is bad my anxiety oh he didn't notice he was too far away all right either way that helped me out a lot and then being a support main helped me know where to ward when to ward all that juicy stuff Probably doesn't want me to take all this, but if it crashes into the tower, then I kind of have to. I'm gonna get a free orb. Just trading for orbs. And you know, I'm not gonna take the full wave. I'll take a little bit. Taxing a little bit because I did trade his laner. So I'm gonna get a Kindle gem just because I prioritize ability haste. Early on, I think that's important. That's good. Holding the wave for him, and then also, uh, oh, what the okay, hell? This was Paris Mine, would unironically win this game. Oh, let's do his ult team. Oh, there you go. Nice. I think you should win that. Oh, thanks so much, that's up. Nice. Yeah, that was a really grief dive attempt. Okay, so now we're gonna just be stacking that tier. We're gonna be getting the Gore Drinker. And we're gonna go back to our old classical item, the one that everyone loves, the one that everyone appreciates. 
the one, the only, Black Cleaver. Yes, boys and girls, we're going Cleaver. See, this is going to be a bit of a full damage build, full damage. Um, the reason why is because damage is very important for Kane's kit because it means you heal more. And healing is very, very overpowered right now in the game overall. And a lot of people in the lower ranks, they don't know how to counter healing. They don't know to buy Executioner or win. So... We have a lot of healing and HP, and it gets to a point where you have too much excess healing that their counter healing doesn't even counter the healing. So, you definitely do benefit a lot from having excess healing. Because your kit obviously has a lot of healing, the ability haste gives you a lot of healing. Then getting like an item, oh, I don't want to spoil too much because, you know, you guys, I wanted to watch the full video, but Ravnus Hydra also gives you a lot of healing on top of damage, on top of ability haste. And you're gonna see how that meshes well with the Transcendence. And the Gathering Storm gives you higher flat AD. Higher flat AD means more Q damage. More Q damage equals more healing because of your passive. You guys see what I'm getting at? I'm like a mad scientist with this build. I've done something similar in the past. Nothing uh, too crazy. Okay, we're gonna wait. And I'm just gonna Q through Victor. That's why I have to follow where Victor is. Ow! Oh. I got form. That's worth. It's Yumi. He's very angry. Um, deep breaths. Sure, inner, inner peace. This Yumi's never gonna sit on me. This Yumi's never gonna sit on me. She's gonna be so mad the entire game. She's gonna like be petty and just never sit on me. All right. I got form now. That's definitely worth trade a one for one and get form. And look for the uh, dragon here. Warwick is rotating across the map to force plays, so we got to be a little bit cautious. But notice that they're running straight bot. This means that they're probably gonna not rush the dragon, which gives me time to look for the dragon. Warwick having no ult, me having ult coming up, and having my smite up it means we can not only fight this, but we can also look for the dragon. See, this is just understanding how champions work. This is something that you will gain as play more. Oh, that was a good sidestep. I told you, now everyone in this game is lower elo. I should have aimed for the warwick. I'm just going to send this bot for the plates. I'm sure you can maybe dive him. Yumi's tanking. She doesn't know, though. Huh. Yeah, Sinjo thought she could just stay under tower there. That was kind of weird. But, see, a lot of times people in lower lows they do stuff like that where they just underestimate the fact that you could just kill them. It happens a lot, like a lot, a lot. So, keep that in mind. Nice, just killed them with autos. Look for the invade. See, whenever you make a good play like that, you want to look to see as much as you can get. Not just getting like, okay, we got that. Let's get the dragon. No, you got to look for, okay, we got that. Let's get his camps. Let's get a bot gank. Let's get some kills. Let's get some dragon. You know? Look for as much as you can look for because I have the time to do it. And I have the patience to do it. There's no rush to get the dragon immediately. And now Cinder's in a spot where she's getting caught. Nice, got him. Perfect. Look for the big play. Not the small play. Small plays are for small players. Do you want to be a good player or a great player? Do you want a 1v9 games or do you want to get carried? If you want to carry, you got to make big plays. You got to understand your limitations as a champ. And I know it's not going to happen overnight. This type of stuff, you know, you gradually get into it. The reason why I'm not going to farm my bot side camps here is because Trundle was top side and he died. But he's going to probably run straight to top side for the rift. And knowing that, I gotta look to counter that immediately. So first things first. Wait, Yumi's actually sitting on me all game. It's cool. I'm gonna stop their healing ASAP, because this is the point 
when they start getting those first items, that's when their healing starts ramping up. So this is a little early. Most time you would want to get Cleaver and then get Executioner, but see, Trundle has that Divine Sunderer, so I have to rush at Executioner. Just stop him in his tracks. Nice, okay, now we can look. See, to the mid tower, then look for his top side. If he has his camps up, we can take him and then take the Rift and then farm all my camps down and look for a bot play. You wanna always make sure that you're mapping out your plays. So let's look, anything here? Nope, but we can look for the top tower at least. You got one camp, see? Perfect. Because everything you take, you gain, and he loses. So it's not like 4CS, it's 8CS, because you keep track of what they're losing as well. And now we can get this tower. Nice. So this is how you build those advantages, because you always look to do more. You always look to just make the biggest play you can. Sometimes what you would do is you'd let the tower kill the wave so they don't get that XP. But the thing is, I don't want to waste time here. Oh, I'm just going to do that ASAP, right? Nice, smite it. Cool. Alright, now we're just going to farm all our camps all the way down. And we're going to look to make a play. You always look for your plays before they're made. A lot of people, they don't think out their oh, plays, they the just go for them. You have to this game. be able to Can think ahead. Can I have ahead. my promotion yet? You have your promotion yet, sure. You're promoted. You're promoted. Congrats. Pleasure to have you. I lost my blue buff because uh, obviously I wasn't there to defend it. But I mean, that's fine in the grand scheme of things. Because what we're looking for is gonna be much greater than a blue buff. If anything, it's better that they took my blue buff because it makes me angry. My anger fuels me to play better. Because it makes me want to kill them. Kane does not like sharing his camps. But you know what I do like? Bot Tower. Okay, is my ult to dodge her ult. Holy shit. Alright, well I got no help. That was too greedy anyway. <laughs> See, I do like to make a lot of greedy plays because I'm a greedy player. Ideally, in high reloads, you'd have like Ashkin rotating down and Victor rotating for you. But like I said, in low reloads, people play more selfish. So you have to play selfish. So looking for a 1v3 play, pretty greedy. But I will add that if I did not get exhausted, I would have won that. I'd just like to add that. Just think about it. I have 2k HP and I take 3.3k. If I get that kill... I get like a 500-600 HP boost, which gives me time to get another Gore Drinker queue off. Goni doesn't have the damage to actually do anything there. But you see, players in this elo do not understand macro whatsoever. So you have to be the one to make your own plays. Don't make plays with your team, make plays off yourself. Set yourself up so you can make the play. As a jungler, you're probably thinking, well, how do I do that? Well, you know, it's simple, you know? If someone's not catching the waves, catch the waves. If someone's not taking the dragons, take the dragon. You know, be the person who makes the plays. I don't even communicate with my team. Like, I can tell them, hey guys, we should do this, you should do that. But it's like, it's not worth it. I'm not going to lie to you. In low elo, there's never a time where it's worth to type anything. But if your team is fighting in a situation like this, it's a good look for this. Um, We could get mid tier 2 tower right now. If I just send this. Yeah, I will. Okay, cool. That guy gets, gets caught and dies. So, what we can do, get mid tower. Get the blue buff. With tower and blue buff, we should be able to get cleaver control ward. Making sure you get large resets before dragons are important because quite literally, I stack myself up to the point where I can be able to 1v4, 1v5. This is where the whole stigma that Kane is so broken, so insane comes from because I understand proper resets for the proper fights. I only take fights I know I can go in and 1v4, 1v5. I wouldn't willingly take a fight unless I knew my team was there to back me up like in Challenger. I wouldn't willingly take a fight that was like greedy or something. I'm gonna make sure that I have the proper utilities to make sure I can kill them all. Like Executioner, Cleaver, all that juicy stuff. All right. So, uh, got a one for one. Not really that big of a deal. By the way, if this was Care Smite, it would unironically win oh, this See, This is what I call limit testing. See, I can only kill him if he tries to fight me. 
she did not. Champs like Syndra, I never really like fuck around with because, you know, I don't want to get caught in the loop of just trying to chase her down and kill her. It's not the vibe. Oh well. This guy's actually trying to fight me. I knew he was going to try and ult me. I knew that guy was going to try and ult me as well. Oh, I forgot that W off. I should have queued first. I take 4.5k damage though. See, once again, ideally, what you'd look for is Yumi to sit on you. Or Ash gonna help. But let me just ask you this for the comments down below. How many times have you been in a situation where you knew if your team helped you out in like a 1v4 or 1v5, you'd win, but they just stand there and watch because they're kind of like, oh, I don't know if I should help or not. That happens so much as Kane that I don't even care. I don't even care. It's just like whatever. Okay, so now we're going to be working on the man immune. That was that. I'm going to be working on the man immune. And we should be good. Notice this build is a little bit expensive, but it does pay off. Because you can get into that potential where you can 1v5. This is a game that is not easy to 1v5 because you have high damage, high damage, high damage, high damage. Their entire team is high damage. Which is very common for low reloads, but... The thing is, it's about hitting your abilities, right? wanted blue buff. Alright, let's take a look at our ability haste. So we're at like 50% almost. That's good. Well, CDR, I mean. I know a little fun fact. If you knock up the uh, raptor and it's out of distance of its, um, what do you call it? Like its zone. Ninja ults me, but the thing is I could dodge her ult. Only because she's bugging me, I'm gonna do that. Only because she's bugging me. Oh, he just ran. Alright, now we just get the Baron. So, the thing is, is with that fight, being in that situation where we can just make picks, because, like I said, people just walk up stupidly. If you know you're stronger, always look for the fight. If you know you can win, with or without the Yumi, I know I could win that. But, if you're ever in that situation, just look to force and then look to make plays with your team. So, I'm gonna get another big power spike, and we're gonna have the Baron. So, we have to make sure that we stay alive with the Baron buff so we can secure the Dragon Soul. Because with the Dragon Soul, it gives us more carry potential. Oh, whoops, I missed that W. <laughs> Whoops. Oh my goodness, Syndra's going for the seal. Ideally, you never want to fight after doing Baron because you just use a lot of your abilities. You now all that stuff is going down. So now we would go man immune and you guys are probably wondering, what would you get next? Well, let me tell you some options, because this is something that you could figure out for yourself. GA is good if your team has a lot of damage, and they could pick up the fight when you're dead. Because think about it, if you die, can your team sustain without you there in the fight? That's what GA is good for. So, most of the time, GA with this build, no. You're looking to survive. You're looking to stay alive longer in fights. So, this is where we can reach the point of a defensive item. So... The best defense sometimes could be good offense, so if we need to kill people before they kill us, like are they squishy enough for us to kill them, then you can go Ravnus Hydra. Now this game, they have a double 80 crit threat, so the best item in the double 80 crit threat is Randuins. Also, for the Syndra, since she's so slippery, I can get Randuins. Alongside, I mean, Randuins is just amazing to their team, so that's going to be our last item here. Like I said, it could be pretty much anything that keeps you alive, so if they have a lot of magic damage, you know, make sure you do that. Uh, with Visage instead. They have a lot of physical damage. Randuins is perfect. Um, even Frozen Heart could work, but the thing is, you don't need mana because the mana immune, but Frozen Heart does work because it gives you more damage. The passive of mana immune. So, 
If you're going Frozen Heart, it wouldn't be for the mana, it'd be more for damage and a defensive item, so it's a good mix. So don't think that that's a bad option, that could definitely work. So, basically your last item, you're either looking at uh, Frozen Heart, Randuin's, Visage, Ravenous Hydra, or for my uh, very aggressive Cade mains, Sorelja's Grudge. Yes, yes. Now, I would like to point out that um, I would fall under that category, so that is the item I'm going to be going this game. Our last item this game is going to be actually uh, Sorelja's Grudge. Now, I know I did taunt the fact that I might be going Ravenous Hydra, but I feel pretty confident that Sorelja's is a little bit better here, just because that would be even faster. That just sounds hilarious, so I'm going to go for it. My damage on Ross is definitely a fun thing to go. I'd even go... Uh, you know, further enough to call it, uh, Rassassin, a little bit. Oh, I smited the minion. Hello. Hey, look, my team's backing me up. So this game, I would go the ultimate 1v9 Ross build for lower elo. I'd go so I'll just crush. But I don't think I'm gonna get that reset because with the Dragon Soul, the game's pretty much just over. Thirteen three seven. The meme number. GG boys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to drop a like and a sub.